Bill Hurd with you from Hackaday. Today we're going to be talking about the art and the science of wire wrap boards. Wire wrap is a uh, construction technique. Uh, we used it a lot in the old days, uh, and for all I know, we're still using it in hardware labs. Uh, but we're just so dang good with CAD systems these days so that you can go straight to PC board and, and have a high chance of it working. And that's why I do for all my small projects. But back then, if you needed an entire digital design that worked, you know, and, and this one um, emulated a chip that didn't yet exist. So it would actually plug into the board or uh, some sat in towers. And I'll show you some of those uh, towers that actually plugged in in place of it. But what we did is we found a way that we can, um, using lots of wires and uh, uh, sockets and, and, and things, that we could uh, make a reliable uh, approximation of the final design. So let me show you this here. And we'll, uh, we'll do some close-ups here when we get to involved in the actual technique. But what you see is the, the, uh, there's long pins on everything, and the wire wrap there's actually a standard for the wire will wrap around, and you can, you may not be able to see it. You see the insulated, but the uninsulated parts wrapped around those posts, and the corner of the post digs into the wire, and it makes a good connection. Um, and then we have for our power, we've got nice ground buses here that, that approximate something you'd find on a PC board, and uh, uh, a nice power rail, and actually uh, follows closely in a lot of cases with the ground. And we've even got things like here's how we would do resistors. If you can see that they sit on a header that's then wire wrapped, so we can we can do some discrete parts and stuff. We would do something like this if we needed to test an architecture or just needed a thing working. And we we would never have used the the old solder solderless breadboards. Um, if you needed it working, you needed it working reliably and needed to be able to carry it around and, and things. Uh, and again, in this case, this this emulated I left room in case I had to keep making the chip bigger but this in the old Commodore days this emulated a, um, an, a memory management unit that didn't yet exist so this plugged in in place of it so this would be the first step towards maybe going to something like this now in this one I actually did jump straight to the PC board because I, I, I based it off the Commodore 64 this is Commodore 128 board is what this is um, with that said, you can see the large number of jumpers and things going on here. And, and in fact, you can tell that I, I uh, in the DRAM area, I, I ran additional capacitors and different additional grounds and stuff to make sure that any of the issues I saw weren't due to just plain old DRAM noise on the VCC and ground. Um, but this would have been the next step. Matter of fact, if you, if you see here, we kind of put prototype only so nobody would confuse this with something that's actually supposed to work. What's interesting about something like this, um, this again, this is from an old Commodore computer uh, back in the 1980s known as the 128. Uh, we went on to sell about 5.8 million of, of that computer, and that would have been like 1.2 billion of 19, uh, dollars in 1980. And... Uh, there's only three of these. You you can only get so many of these continuing to work as you make changes, as you find things. And so, for, you know, picture uh, that three of these uh, were the fathers of a of billion dollars worth of computers. It's kind of scary, especially, if, you know, for a young engineer, if he didn't know enough not to be scared. Let me show you some of the uh, tools and some of the components that uh, we use to create wire wrap. Here is... Uh some wire wrap wire that I bought it from Radio Shack back when I was, oh, I would have been about 16, so was that 40 years ago? Still have it. This was not great wire. This is a, kind of a cheap plastic sheath uh, that's on here. This actually comes with a little stripper and a cutter where you can push on this and it'll cut it, and then you pull and it strips the right length and everything. Um, but for real serious stuff, you, you wouldn't use this kind of wire, this little plastic. Um, what I have is a couple of spools of Kynar, which I believe is a member of the tetrafluoroethylene slash Teflon family. Look at that. <laughs> That's just a real nice quality wire. And this, of course, the blue is the insulation. To strip it, it's all about not nicking the wire. So the guys in technician labs would have their cutters preset to 30 gauge. It's just a little nick on this will cause it to break later and actually it can break and still sit exactly in the same place and it looks like a wire and you don't know that it's it's no continuity. And then here's a wire wrap tool. I had to get this. I can't find mine and this silly thing cost me like 29 bucks these days. 
You just get them from Radio Shack, we're just good. And there's there's a little stripper built in there also. So we can go pull down into the stripper channel and pull it out and result in a strip. There's our insulation. But what we use in a hardware lab is one of these. Now this is broken. I just found this out when I went to shoot this video and I pulled the trigger on this thing. So by the time I finish the video, you're going to see a working one. But um, technicians, they, they were fast. They would push this wire into this, put it on the lead, pull and off like that. And it wasn't unusual for them. They could do something about twice the size of this in a day and maybe spend the next half day um, buzzing it out, as we said. They, they actually used a, a light bulb driven thing so they could go fast and just drag it down the lines and, and find all of the uh, connections and, and mark them off on the schematic. So when I got one of these, it needed very little troubleshooting. If, if I drew whatever I drew on the schematic, I pretty much got um, handed back to me. So let me show you a wire wrap socket. These are square posts, so the corners uh, are part of the... Um, when you wrap the wire on it, you get a mechanical stability, and then the post, the corners of the post cut into the just slightly into the wire itself, and you get a good electrical connection. These days, uh, if you need to do a chip, which they don't make wire wrap as much as they used to, so if you need to socket a chip that you can't find a socket for, you can use strips like this, which you still can get. And I know Bar Brian uh, Benchkoff from uh, Hackaday was doing a 68,000 project and needed one of the big Hershey bars, which he did. He did get one. But this is uh, how, if you can't, if you can't get that 60-pin socket, um, you would do something like this, and uh, or however many pins it has, you could build your own. So, and you might already be familiar with a wire wrap socket. This thing, this crazy connector from the Arduinos. I call it crazy because just try and find the source for this stuff, that where it's not already uh, marked way up in in out outlets. Um, but that's a wire wrap socket, so you may be familiar with that. And then if you still want to do surface mount, you can take your surface mount, plug it into a wire wrap socket, and you can still mount it. So here's resistors. Well, same thing. It's a header into a wire wrap socket. As I mentioned, my electric uh, wire wrap gun is broken after all these years. It was 30 years old after all. And uh, it worked by, um, by putting the wire into the, into the chuck and when you pull the trigger, the motor it had a clutch in it and would do the right number of turns and then release, and you got a literally a perfect wrap every time. Manual one works off mechanical energy. Uh, still expensive, hundred bucks probably. And um, I'm going to show you how to do some wraps with this thing. We start with a piece of wire wrap wire that's been stripped back and in the chuck there's a hole for the post and then a hole for the wire and the hard part of all of this is getting the wire into the right um, hole in, in the chuck here. Through the miracle of modern TV I now have the wire in the hole that's going to revolve around the post. Here's a side shot as I'm going to, to uh, activate the wire wrap gun. So you hear the noise. And what we've got now right here is you'll see several turns of the wire wrap wire followed by a turn of the insulated part of the wire. So the, ho the whole thing for the techs was they'd have a process where they would uh, strip the wire back, get it into the wire wrap tool, get it onto the post, pull, pull it the length they need, strip it again into the gun, and pull again. And they would just sit there and go from, from post to post doing that. So again, a very rapid once you get the hang of it. I want to show you uh, one of the, the little tools we use. I, I use these. A, a, tech, a lot of the techs wouldn't be caught dead using them. Um, of course, then when they miswired it, they would, uh, when, they, when they miswired it, they would kind of quietly undo the wires themselves. But what we have are these things. These are numbered in the opposite direction of what you're used to because they go on the bottom of the board. And by putting this over the post, then it, it tells you, you know, pin one, which is now on this corner instead of the other corner like you're used to, um, they can go two to 15, five to seven, and, and not have to sit there and count. And, you know, they used to tag it or write sometimes on the board. Um, but a good tech, after a while, he doesn't use these. Me, I was an engineer. I, I tended to make these out of paper or do enough drawing on the board that I didn't have to go tearing up a whole bunch of wires later. So I want to show you some specifics about wire wrapping. 
Uh, first, let me show you this tool uh, again a little closer here. And again, I called this a wire wrap tool, but one of the important things about it is one end is for wire wrapping and the other end is for unwrapping. The ideal wrap um, starts with an inch of, of stripping on the wire. Let's see if you can see that. And the first wrap should be of insulation completely around the square post and then have three to four wraps in addition to it. And the first wrap being still insulated, it, it allows it, uh, is good for vibration and whatnot. It, it, you know, it's not working, it's not cutting at the wire itself, it's uh, being cushioned by the insulation. So I've got some variations here. They're kind of hard for me to see. Um, this one here doesn't have an initial um, wrap of insulation. Same with this one here and here. These are all different ways where you can see it come in. And this one here where it's already stripped by the time it gets to the post, these are notorious breakers because if you move the wires back and forth behind it, it's, it's working that. So you see some uh, better wraps here and here in here with the, uh, where the wrap goes all the way around once and then three to four wraps. And you can have multiple wraps. Um, we used to do three. There's some standards, I think, that say maybe only two, but uh, we used to do three. I dare say somebody's probably done four. But if you plan your project correctly, you'll be able to daisy chain three or four without um, hurting your signal integrity too much. Here's the unwrap tool at work here. We'll drop it on there, spin it around a few times, and we've got a good mechanical release. Um, you obviously wouldn't want to reuse that wire without cutting it and shortening it. That's it for this video. I wanted to uh, talk about some other things, but I'm not going to get a chance to do that. I did want to talk about some of the noise uh, techniques and, and how you can see noise. And it's actually prevalent in the, in the wire wrap board. It makes a good place to see it. Um, but we'll do that perhaps in a different video. So hopefully this has showed you about some of the basics of, of wire wrapping and um, You know, it's still a, a very viable way to do connectivity uh, It would be my choice uh, right behind actually just taking a leap and cutting a PC board uh, Especially with cheap PC houses these days. I've thrown away more $20 boards. Than I know how to count so again Bill heard on behalf of Hackaday uh, this one was on wire wrapping and uh, We'll catch you on the next one